Between 2007 and 2016, Elizabeth Wetlofer, a former nurse, murdered eight elderly patients and attempted to harm six others in southwestern Ontario. She was sentenced to life in prison in 2017 for the murders, making her one of Canada's most prolific serial killers. The case sparked widespread public outrage and made international headlines. It led to lawsuits against Wetlofer and the nursing homes she worked for, as well as a broad provincial investigation into flaws in Ontario's long-term care system. But what happened when Elizabeth was brought into the interrogation room? Wetlofer began working at the Woodstock Caressant Care Nursing Home in June 2007. She started killing patients there a few months later. Wetlofer typically worked the night shift and was primarily in charge of medication dispensing. At her place of work, she murdered seven of her eight victims. Wetlofer committed her crimes while taking insulin, a diabetes medication that reduces blood sugar levels. When administered in excess, it can result in a coma or death. Because insulin overdoses are difficult to detect, victims' families initially assumed that their loved ones died naturally. Wetlofer described a red surge before the killings and a laughing feeling after the murders in a 2.5-hour videotaped confession to police. She also claimed that God was telling her to kill. In one instance, she thought her victim was no longer enjoying life. Wetlofer also used insulin injections to commit four alleged murders and two serious assaults against patients in her care, in addition to the eight murder charges. So I just want to go through, like I said, a couple of formalities and cover a few little things. If you wish to speak to a lawyer at any time, we can make it happen whenever. Liz Wetlofer's rights are read to her before the interrogation begins. Liz has the right to hire a lawyer as well as the right to remain silent. However, it appears unlikely that she will exercise either of these rights as her detective asks a few questions to get to know her. Back at Metal Park, what was your addiction? Hydromorphone. And like, how much were you using? I was a binge user so I would use what I could to get hold of by stealing it from patients. As we previously stated, she worked in a nursing facility and had access to all of her patients' medications. Liz had been stealing hydromorphone a strong painkiller that's comparable to morphine, and using it secretly to deal with stress for years. But it turned out that addiction wasn't her only mental health problem. So as far as related position acts go, um, St. Elizabeth, yeah, that was your last position as a correct okay, and you said you resigned from there. Yeah, okay, what? What brought you to that? Are those not two things that drive you a little crazy? Okay, this is the part that I haven't told the doctors. When my ex and I broke up in 2007, I was already taking medication for my borderline personality disorder, and I was so angry, and it was like a voice said it inside me, I'll use you, don't worry about it. Liz had borderline personality disorder for many years and had taken medication to try to suppress it. This meant she hadn't let it affect her much, at least not until 2007 when everything changed horribly. Wetlofer injected insulin into sisters Clotilde Adriano and Albina de Medeiros between June 25 and December 31, 2007. Wetlofer's first victims were two Caressant Care residents. The doses were not fatal, and neither of their deaths was attributed to Wetlofer. Adriano passed away in 2008 and de Medeiros in 2010. Wetlofer was charged with two counts of aggravated assault in January 2017 for the injections. Wetlofer committed her first murder on August 11, 2007 in Caressant when she administered enough insulin to kill 84-year-old James Silcox. Wetlofer also murdered Caressant residents Maurice Granite, 84, Gladys Millard, 87, Helen Matheson, 95, Mary Zurowinski, 96, Helen Young, 90, and Maureen Pickering, 79, between December 2007 and March 2014. Wetlofer was dismissed from Caressant days after murdering Pickering for a series of medication mistakes, including giving insulin to one patient when it was prescribed for another. Caressant had suspended her several times before firing her. Wetlofer moved between facilities after Caressant until she retired from nursing in 2016. Wetlofer was first interviewed by Toronto Police on September 29, 2016. The following day, she resigned from her nursing position with the College of Nurses. Wetlofer, 49, was taken into custody on October 24, 2016. The killings shocked and horrified the public after Woodstock law enforcement released details the following day.